In my advice, this is just my humble advice, go back to that desk and start asking questions, bro. So here's the thing here, man. Um, comedy is subjective. Let me just, let's just start there. Comedy is subjective. So what I find hilarious, you might say, the heck is this? And what you find funny, I might say, what the heck is this? So the key thing is comedy is subjective. Some people may find something funny, some people may find another thing funny. Very few people, but we'll get that, talk about it. Very few comedians or people are universally funny. It's, it's, it's very, very few. So your boy came up with a stand-up. Now, I knew he was a comedian before because he's talked about the, being in the comedy store and doing stand-up com comedy before. So I knew he was a comedian before the whole podcast stuff. Um, again, I speak for myself. I'm speaking for myself. I don't find the guy funny. As I was watching the stand-up, I was like, I was watching the stand as if I was watching like a drama. <laughs> it was as if I was watching like The Exorcist or like some harrowing drama. I'm like, oh, that's, is that supposed to be funny? Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Like, And the thing about comedy is it's instant. You can't explain why something's funny. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> if it's funny, you laugh. It, it should be instant. So if there are people that found that stand up funny or find Jerogan funny, more all power to you. All power to you. I just don't find him funny. And I'm like, I, I, I did not know what that was. If that was comedy, cool. But for me, <laughs> sorry. You know, sorry. So, nah. Nah, for me, that was not funny. And for a guy who loves stand-up comedy and respects the people that are able to do it and guys, how guys are able to come up with, with, with jokes, as I was watching that, I was like, and I, and I say this with all due respect. I say this with all due respect. When I was watching this, I say, Joe, get your ass back at that desk and start asking some questions. Drop that mic, go from standing up to sitting down and start asking some questions because that is what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> because let's be real, most people know Joe Rogan for the podcast. He, he like What's really got him big was UFC. Commentating off to the UFC, but what most people in the world know him for is the podcast. Because UFC is still a growing sport. Most people in the world don't watch UFC or are into UFC even now. Um, so, but the globally, what he's known for when you say the name Joe Rogan, the average man on the street, you say Joe Rogan, oh yeah, Joe Rogan podcast. They wouldn't say, oh yeah, the UFC guy. Oh, the stand up comedy guy. He's not known for being a comedian. He was, he didn't get famous for being a comedian. He got famous from UFC, but got globally famous through his podcast. And that's what he should be doing. Like, I'm sorry, mates. I get it. You started off being a comedian. Everyone thinks that they're funny. You know, people have said you're funny. You went up there, but I mean, bro, look, cool. Try to remind guys that you're a comedian, but for me, my advice, man, this is just my humble advice. Go back to that desk and start asking questions, bro. Don't, don't do the stand-up again. Don't. Because those jokes, nah, nah, nah I'm, I'm sorry. Like, and that's just for me. Again, I start this video by saying comedy is subjective. So if you, if you found it funny, okay, more power to you. I can say that. Oh my gosh, you're wrong for finding it funny. No, 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 no. You, you can never say someone is wrong for finding finding something funny. No, because comedy, you can say something is objectively funny. A lot of stuff it's subjective, and again, I'll explain why. But for me. Nah, I'm like no, that's this. this it's this not. This is not funny. Again, it was like watching a serious Halloween drama. <laughs> well, I told you, it was like watching The Exorcist. The Exorcist ain't funny. It's it's serious. You know, it was, it was or like watch what Schindler's List or like Twelve Years a Slave. It was like I was watching a serious drama. It was like, wait, am I supposed to be watching this seriously or am I supposed to be laughing? I think I'm supposed to be laughing. I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to be laughing, but I'm not laughing. So if I'm not laughing, something's wrong here, or maybe I'm person's wrong. But the thing, though, is get your ass back to that desk and start asking questions, bro. Go back to asking questions, please. That's, not, that's my advice for Joe Rogan. And also, what I want to be very clear here. All because I don't find Joe Rogan funny, don't now say that, oh, because you don't agree with his politics, you're a snowflake, oh, you're woke, you're ultra-leftist. No. I am not an extreme right. I am ex 
definitely not an extreme left. <laughs> my politics might be left center, maybe center, center left, because some views I have might be viewed as very conservative. <laughs> some views I have. And so views I have might be viewed as very liberal, but I don't consider myself a, a super conservative. I am not a super liberal. I'm neither one of those, because my politics and my views, they're new ones. They're complex. They're a mixture of both. So yeah, so all because I don't find him funny doesn't mean that, oh my gosh, because he said this about liberals and he's, no, no. It's just that I just don't, he's just, it's just not funny. <laughs> I don't, Joe Rogan is not the guy who I'll say, oh, that's a funny guy. No, he's not funny. And I go to his podcast. <sighs> I sort of know why he's famous, but I still don't sort of get it. So let me deal with both. Why is he famous? I think the idea of having the regular Joe, <laughs> having a unedited, very free conversation for three, four, five hours with a guest, no one ever did that. That was just something new. Like, when you just look at, whether it's Jimmy Carson, any of these guys, it was very controlled, very much, you know, yeah, yeah for 20 minutes, everything was very structured. This was just, it, it felt more organic, and that is why it sort of changed the way, changed podcasting, and how, and what the kind of things that we now see from podcasts that are four or five hours long. So that idea was new, and it was novel, and I think that was what was so great. But make no mistake, we don't watch the podcast because of you. We're not here because, oh my gosh, Joe Rogan, man, because he's so funny and he asks great questions and he's a great interviewer. No, he's not, he's not a good interviewer. No, he doesn't ask interesting questions and I'll explain why. We're not here because of you, Joe. We're here because of your, your guests. Because I remember the first one I watched of his was the Mike Tyson. I think it was the first Mike Tyson one that he, he did. I watched it while I was at work. And I was like, oh my, this, because you knew so much about Mike Tyson and you never saw Mike Tyson talk for like three, four, five hours. So that was like, oh, that was pretty cool. Bro, the Terrence Howard thing is freaking, it's, it's astonishing. <laughs> so I'm not watching it because of, man, Joe Rogan, this guy's a really good interview on the questions he asks. I'm asking because you've just created this format for Terrence Howard just to, to cook. So I'm watching it for what Terrence Howard wants to say. The stars are the people being interviewed. So I'm here because, man, Terrence Howard is a very interesting dude. <laughs> so whether you believe him or not believe him, it's, it's super interesting, man. And if what he's saying is true and he really is smarter than Neil deGrasse Tyson and most scientists, bro, we were all wrong. So we are here for the guests. We're not here for Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan, we're not here for you, bro. <laughs> we're here for your guests. Because let's keep it real. This is a great interview. Now, you may know I'm Norman Hughes, um, English interviewer called Parkinson. And he had the Parkinson show where he pretty much brought a guest and he interviewed. This is a great interviewer because when you look at him, you realize, that, oh no, this is a skill. Because of the questions he asks, how he asks them, the kind of rapport he has with the guests, how he makes the guests feel. I'm like, no, this, there is a skill in asking questions. You know, like there's no skill in what he, he does here. No, there, there is, like literally, Anybody could do Joe Rogan's job. Grab any dude from the road. Any dude from the road can do what this guy does. So I give Joe Rogan credit for just coming up with the idea of talking for four, five hours and just speedboarding for four, five hours. I'm not giving him credit for his interview skills. No, he, no, he has no interview skills. This dude is a great interviewer. I'm like, no, this is a skill and this guy is good at interviewing. So... When, if you watch me, oh no, this guy is great. This guy is absolutely so, so, so superb. And I wanted to go back to comedy. Because again, I said comedy is subjective here. So if you find Joe Rogan funny, I, just, I don't think the guy is funny. And I, don't and I don't know how he even had a career as a stand-up comedy. Because bro, if you're saying this guy had a... And let's be real. As I said again, there's no way in hell he would have been famous of being a stand-up comic. Heck no. The only reason why he... He did a special is because you're just building off of the name you've built, being a, a podcaster. But now you came up being a stand-up comic. Guys are like, oh, Joe, no, 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 no. Go back to being a podcast. No, we don't, we don't want you telling, telling jokes. No, no. Like, you are clearly not good, good at this. Your skill was at your podcast, not at this. If you were a stand-up comic, you would have never gotten famous. Because if you want to hear funny, this is funny. <laughs> this is funny. And there's a reason why I picked this pick in particular, because it's very key here. This Dave Chappelle, this version of Dave Chappelle, when he was like this, 
you'll be hard pressed to find anybody that didn't find this guy funny. Yes, comedy is subjective. I know it's sub subjective. I have yet to find an individual who did not find this dude freaking hilarious, where you are on the floor laughing. So, for me, I may be wrong, this guy was objectively funny <laughs> because of what he looks like, how he told jokes, how intelligently he constructed the, the jokes, the execution of those jokes. Bro, in a set, you will laugh out loud at least once. <laughs> at least for one of his jokes, you will laugh out loud. Like, in this special, there was the joke when he told a joke about the crack baby. When I heard that the first time, I was on the floor with tears in my eyes. Because obviously, when you hear it, it's going to find. But when I heard that joke for the first time, like the baby on like the street corner, the crack baby selling crack, I was on the floor. I was done. I was, because I was like, that's, because just the concept of that, the genius of just coming up with that concept. And I'm like, no, that's, that's genius. That's amazing. Like, when I was, I was like, no, no, that is an amazing comedian. That is an amazing comedian, you know. Um, and you see, and another guy, see, for me, this guy, he's believed to be the greatest comedian of all time. <laughs> Let's keep it real. Richard Pryor, if you basically, the GOAT comedian is Richard Pryor. Even if you don't find him funny, you can just see, you no, know, this take, this is a skill. Because when you just look at what he thinks about, how he constructs a joke, the jokes that he comes up with, the creativity and the imagination he has, I'm like, no, this is, this is a genius at this skill. Like, this really is a craft. This is not just, oh, I'm just going around laughing. No, no, there is a skill to this comedy thing. Like, just even the concept of giving characters to animals, where dogs have characters and have thoughts. I was like, no, that's genius. So when you see someone like Richard Pryor, you're like, oh, no, 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 no. Rogan, no, 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 you need to be skilled at this. <laughs> there are definitely great comedians and there are brick comedians. So again, even if you don't find Pryor funny, you have to take back and be like, no, this, this guy's skilled. And there is a reason why he's seen as a genius because so many comedians pretty much, like he's the goat because what he did was far ahead of its time. He changed the way people told comedy because he brought vulgarity, he brought swear words, he brought stuff that no one would ever think of saying into comedy. So he reinvented and changed how people did comedy. But just how he constructed jokes was amazing, you know? But now, you see, this is, this, this, this is the Dave Chappelle that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not into. <laughs> You see, this Dave Chappelle here, no, I'm, I'm cool. Like, this dude was funny. This dude was pure funny. This dude is, can be funny, but also it's like, okay, all right, look, well, well, I didn't come here for a political thing. I didn't come here for a tirade about, oh, this is what I think about with the Joe Rogan thing, like oh, the trans and um, COVID, COVID. I'm like, okay, yeah, all right, cool. And even the Dave Chappelle said, okay, what makes great comedy is we are here to laugh. See, this is the key thing, and I may sound harsh saying this. And I don't want to sound harsh, but this is real. You're a glorified court jester. You're a glorified clown. Can comedians give us insights? Of course. And say things that are profound. I'm not looking at a comedian to give us insights into social issues, to give us some true insights into the real pressing politics. No. You're here to put up a humorous mirror onto what's happening within the world. You are a glorified court jester. Like back in the days where the king would be like, okay, court jester, come and entertain us. Just that they've not involved from that, but at its very core, you are a glorified court jester. So by Dave Chappelle now feeling that, like, why do we need to hear about Dave Chappelle about Trump being elected president? Like, why? Oh, oh, let's hear what Dave Chappelle has to say and give us the insights. No, we're not. No. Crack some jokes. Crack some jokes because I'm sorry. You are not well-versed or in any position or educated enough to be given any political insights. Everybody should have their views, 100%. 
But we can't rush to you to now be giving you his about anything. So, and I think the issue for a modern Dave Chappelle is he's become too political and too preachy. Whereas for this dude, oh, I'm here to, to crack jokes. But the beauty about this is that within those jokes I crack, oh, that's actually interesting. Oh, that's, and do you know what is so funny? There was a joke he cracked about, you know, oh my gosh, stop going, where's Ja? Where is Ja? As in, there is a pressing political topic, and then I'll go to Ja Rule. And he said that, why the heck are you going to Ja Rule at this time of seriousness? <laughs> but the funny thing now is, he's now become that Ja Rule, where if there's something serious, or oh, what's Dave Chappelle going to say about this? So the joke that he cracked about people going to Ja Rule, he's become that joke. He's become the subject of that joke. He's become that Ja Rule. It wasn't for Dave Chappelle. No, 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 no. We don't need you to be telling us about any of this serious political stuff. No, crack jokes. Within your jokes, touch upon serious stuff, but no, crack these jokes. Crack these jokes. I'm sorry. But it just shows you how screwed up we are as a society where we are now looking to a comedian to talk to us about George Floyd, BLM, politics, Trump, which is insane. That's insane. You see, if you want to know funny, this, 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 this is funny. This man is funny. And this, and this is what separated Cat Williams from a Dave Chappelle. Cat Williams knows that the moment I step on that stage, I'm a comedian. I'm here to make you laugh. I'm not here to preach to you. I'm not here to give you any of these political views or anything. I am here to make you laugh. I'm going to touch on some seriousness, but it is all because he becomes the character of I am the comedian. I'm not the political figure. I'm not this guy who, now let me show you or give you my view on this very serious topic. No, I'm here to make you laugh. I am here to provide comedy. Once he steps off that stage, now I can be serious. Now I can be insightful. Because now I'm not Cat Williams, the comedian, the entertainer. I'm not Cat Williams, the man. The Cat Williams, the everyday guy. So, we're not interviewed with um, Shannon. Like, okay, that makes sense. So, so now you say, oh no, this guy is a very deep, intelligent thinker. Whether you agree or disagree with what he's saying, you can say this guy is very aware. But why I appreciate Cat Williams more than Dave Chappelle is Cat Williams, he separates the two. You see, Dave Chappelle tries to bring this real self onto the stage and combine the both. Whereas I know for Cat Williams, those are separate. I am a court jester here. <laughs> I'm a glorified court jester here who is here to joke and make people laugh and have, make people have a, a, a good time. I'm not here to talk down to people or give a political speech or to preach or go on a soliloquy. No, I'm here to entertain. But in this forum, okay, now you're speaking to Cat Williams, the, the man. Now we can talk about how the world is messed up, the secrets that people are hiding, how it's up for everybody this year. And these Hollywood people are truly sick, twisted people. And things you have to do to get by in, in Hollywood. Things we already knew, but he perfectly enunciated it well. So I respect that. And again, so the comedy thing, go back to Joe Rogan, it's subjective. It's subjective. This is the funniest film I've ever seen in my life. The Cable Guy. The Cable Guy is the funniest film I think that has ever been made. 100%. For a lot of people, the film is creepy and it's weird. And they think it's, it's Jim Carrey's like worst film. But I think it's the funniest film I've ever seen in my entire life. And Jim Carrey's performance in this is insane. But, so, but, if people watch this film and say it's not funny, that's down to you. That's down, down to you. But for me, it's the funniest thing ever. So again, for fans of Joe Rogan, if you find this funny, cool. More power to you. And it's just that the reviews have not been great. But again, those are just people's views. But I just feel for Joe Rogan, if I'm advising him, is that, mate, you have to be real. You are and will always be known as the guy who changed podcasting. That is, that's what, you don't be known as the UFC guy. You will not be known as the comedian. You will be known to the world as, oh, he's the podcast guy. So, it's fine for him to do this, but I think if he's honest with himself, you're not funny. And you don't, you're, you're, you're not a skilled 
con comedian. You're not a skilled stand up comic. Like you, you are not, um, you're not the, you are not this guy and you will never be this guy. <laughs> you are not this guy and you will never be this guy. Um, you are not this guy and you'll never, you'll never be this guy. And you sure as heck will never be as naturally funny as this guy. Say what you want about Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey is naturally funny. You could put Jim Carrey in any place, in any world. He'll contort his body, physically do something. You will laugh. He is just naturally funny. <laughs> so, so that's the thing. So for, G for Joe, Gabe and Adessa are interviewing people. Just get, never leave this desk. That's my advice. Never, never, never grab that mic ever again. Never stand up and do comic ever again. Sit your ass behind that desk and start asking some damn questions. And I want a part two, part three, and part four of this interview. Okay.